Hi, everyone. My name is Diana Stanley, and I am the CEO here at The Lord's Place. And we are so grateful that you're joining us this evening to learn about some of our women's journeys as they've ended homelessness here in Palm Beach County. Tonight, this Zoom presentation, this panel, we call it, is dedicated to Sleep Out 2022, in which hundreds of people will be sleeping out tonight, April 1st, as we work together to break the cycle of homelessness here in Palm Beach County. So this particular Zoom panel is really going to panel is really going to be on our women's services. And I am so proud to be able to introduce to you our director of women's services, Val Stanley. No, no relation, only by spirit, <laughs> as we say, I'm committed to working with women. And Val Stanley is um, an amazing woman who has changed hundreds of women's lives. So I'd like to introduce you to Val and let her introduce you to our panelists this evening. Val? Thank you, Diana. It's my pleasure and honor to introduce two women from our women's services component here at the Lord's Place. We have Cynthia Jenkins, who resides at Holly Place. And Cynthia has been with us since June 17th, 2021. And we have Patrice Wolfork, who is coming to us from Berkeley Place. And Patrice has been with us since July 6th. I wanted to let our viewers know that Cynthia is receiving closed captioning here because she is deaf and was so excited to be able to be part of this panel because of our accommodation of her needs. So that's it. These are our ladies for today. And welcome ladies. And we are so thrilled and honored that you have chosen to spend time with us today and to share your story with our audience. Thank you. So I'll start with you, Ms. Patricia, if I may. I wanted to know what your life was like before or you came world of the Lord's place. It was rough. It was really rough. Um, I went from couch to couch, staying at family members' houses to friends' houses. Um, in the process, I also lost my children. Um, so yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty rough, and it wasn't easy. And when you said that, how long was that challenge? Prior to the Lord's place, how many years were you struggling with that? Okay, two years. Two years. Great. Cynthia, how about you, sweetheart? What was your life like before you came to the Lord's place? When I came here, I was I was a mess. I mean, you know, I, I, I didn't know who I was or how I was getting or how I am going to maintain a, a healthy of my life. I was living in this hospital, all dysfunctional people, and it was around me 24 a day. And I couldn't sleep, then I had to move to another place, and I kept moving to this place and that. Place. Just got to the point where I surrendered. I couldn't take it no more. I had been in the room so many times, and you know, I prayed. I prayed to God every time I get out, so it gets worse. It just, it, Worse every time I go out and I do this, but this last time I found the Lord's place. I'm so, I mean, I had no idea that this place is going to help me again in a way it's still doing because the simple fact that I gave up, I didn't give up on me. Good for you. Good for you. You know, for those that do not know, Miss Cynthia and Patrice yeah. represent lots of women that have come through our doors. And to hear your stories of uh, holding on and continuing to move forward really inspire others. So thank you very much for that. Um, Patrice, I wanted to ask you something. So are you from this locally? Are you from, are you from this area? Yes. I was actually born in Bethesda Hospital right here in Fortin Beach. Okay. Okay, got it. So this is home for you. Yeah. Yes. And Miss Cynthia, are you from South Florida also? I'm from Tallahassee, Florida. Yay! Yay. Wow. <laughs> we love our Tallahassee. Um, <laughs> there you go. We love our Tallahassee. I moved here like 30 years ago. I've been here exactly 30 years. Okay. And so uh, this home, this is home to you then. Well, this is home to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, exactly. Well, exactly. Yeah, because um, no worries, Miss Bell. 
I was going to ask, what do you ladies think being Holly and Berkeley place are the hardest, what's the hardest hurdle that you've got to overcome? Um, for me, my hardest hurdle was not being with my kids. Um, being around familiar faces that I didn't know, but I grew to love the ladies and the staff. So. Yeah. yeah. And what, what do you love about them? For, what, what did you find out that you, was, what was it that drew you to them? Well, staff to me is very helpful, especially with my journey with trying to reunite with my kids. They have been there with me 100%. Um, they also help me find places to stay um, in my process of looking for an apartment. Um, if the girls here, I can tell, I can tell, um, I can tell them anything. Good, <laughs> we good. Can, we, we bond like so. Yeah, good. You know, Tris, so many people don't, don't believe that women um, experience homelessness experience the risk of being homeless. Um, and I think it's so important when we hear st your story and Cynthia's story that people understand that it's not just sometimes the image that we have living out on the street, that it's just people like all of us that were are homeless or homeless and, and how the Lord's place had, had helped in that journey. But when you look back in your life, which was right now, and you think about you know, all your changes that you've had, um, what one thing that you look at the Lord's place, I wouldn't be where I am today. Lord's place, I've gone to get my GED. They Good. have helped me get my fork living license. They have helped me in some ways just to better myself. Wonderful. And Miss Cynthia, Val's question. Was, what was the question, Val? It was, what did you find was the biggest or hardest hurdle that you've had to come since you've been with us? Um, I came here since I've been here. Since, been um, here. since you've been here, because we're still working on challenges, aren't we? Okay. Okay. Wow. My biggest, my biggest hurdle was trying to be accepted. I just, I don't know. I, I was such a mess, but I also wanted to be a better person. I wanted the people around me to see a happy place that I was, I was a very good person and I tried really hard. Maybe I was trying too hard to fit in, you know, but I fit, I fit right on in there though. <laughs> I, I didn't have to, a couple of Little steps, a little bumps in the road since I came, but we that's what that was resolved immediately. And after that, I mean, everything's been great. I did have a problem with some, you know, with some like attitude and stuff, but I can't control people's attitude. I can't control, I can control the way I react to right, their, right, you understand me. And that's what I worked on, and then I learned, I learned to be stuff. I learned to just calm down and if it doesn't apply, I'll let it fly. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I have a question for you ladies. Where do you think you would be right now without the Lord's place? I think I think it's important for people to understand that. Patrice, I'll start with you, honey. I believe, I don't know where I'd be. I'd probably still be out here on the streets looking for a place to stay. Yeah, yeah. And what about you, Miss Cynthia? Man, I don't know. If, if, if I found this place at the right nick of time, because I knew I was about to just give up, and I probably would have still been on the street, still been house to house, still been, you know, I have a devoted friend that's been in recovery 20 years, and he helped me and he helped me, but he couldn't stop me from doing what I was doing. With, regardless of what he was doing, I still wanted to have it my way. So I, I would have been a, a maybe dead. I don't know because that's just how bad I was. Yeah. If I yeah. had that thing, and I begged the people, I begged them, I said, please, 
see, can I talk to this lady? And they said that y'all wouldn't have a bed for me for four days. I went crazy. They told me that, can you just go back to the house for four days? I said, no, I'd rather go to jail than to go back to the house. And guess yeah. what? That's where I went. Yep. <laughs> but they yeah. gave me a bed for four days in the um in the infirmary. Okay. When they called me and said, Miss Bass Stanley wanted to talk to me. Oh, wow. I wish they could have took a picture of me. <laughs> At that moment, I was so overwhelmed and I was crying. I'm like, oh, Miss Bass. I asked she said, Sister, do you want to come? I said, yes, ma'am, please. And she, and she let me. Everybody, know. everybody awaits the phone my call for Miss Bass. my life, you guys. Really, I'm telling you the truth. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Val, she said she, you saved her life. I said, Vesta, Miss Cynthia, they all await the phone call from Val, right? From Miss Val, right, Patrice? That's what everybody. Yes, everybody the day wants she to called me, it was a relief. <laughs> it's true, yeah. right? They all wait for that. So, for our listening yeah. audience, one of the most important pit things you need to know is that the Lord's Place is one of the very few agencies in town that in West Palm Beach and Palm Beach County that provide services to single women, and which is run by Val Stanley as the Director of Women's Services. So, we are honored to be able to serve women like Cynthia and Patricia. So, thank you so much for, for sharing that story. Val, what are some other things we want to learn about these amazing women? Well, I, you know, once the women come into our, our campuses, we let the past just slip away and start looking at our future. We address each of you as women of Burkle Place and women of Holly Place. So my question would be, where do you see your future now? Share a little bit about the vision that you shared on your vision boards just recently. So um, Cynthia, would you tell us what your future looks like? Right now, I'm, 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 I'm not really, I'm not really sure about my living uh, situation right now because I have to wait. I have to wait at least four more months before I can have, get a place. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just get out of here and don't have a plan. Yeah, That's yeah. not what I want to do. But after I, I'm going to miss this place. But right now, I said I was talking to Ms. Bell. I want to talk to Ms. Bell when she has time. And um, so that's supposed to be leaving in June, July, one of them. And what I want to do, I want to be a better person. I want to have my own place. I want to be able to, to wake up in the morning and say, wow, I learned things. I want to get my goals in order. I want to get my hearing aid. I'm waiting on the word for my disability right now. I don't want to get me some hearing aids. I want to just get my teeth put in my mouth and I want to be a better person. This place has gave me all the tools that I need. Now it's up to me to use them. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and Absolutely. you're still young in your journey, Cynthia. So there's no rush in, in these goals. You, right. you know, fortunately, you're still early in your tenure here. So we've got plenty of time to still work on those, those particular things that are on your dream board. Patrice. You recently shared your vision board with, with, the, with the community. Can you share it with our friends here? Okay, so on my vision board, I have a house, a car, and a picture of my kids. In the near future, I see myself in an apartment. I see myself having a vehicle, and I see myself reuniting with my three kids. Aww. Along with that, I'm also working towards getting my GED so I can get my general contractor's license. Oh, how exciting is that? Yes. That, why, why general contractor? Is that something you've always wanted? I actually want to open my own general, con I actually want to open my own home improvement company. Love it. Have she's you our always done HGTV that? HGTV star. I'm sorry. I was going to say she's our next HGTV star. <laughs> I love it. Have you always been like the handy woman around? Yeah, they have the Patrice here. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Good for you. Good for you. Well, we hope that all comes that all comes through. So, okay. So, I'm trying to remember how long everyone's been there. Um, Patrice, how long have you been there, honey? I've been here 
uh, about nine months now. Mm -hmm. So in those nine months, what's the one thing you are the most proud of? Actually looking towards my future oh, and I love it. actually okay. moving towards actually accomplishing the goals that are on my vision board. I love it. I love it. And Miss Cynthia, what are you the most proud of during your time with us? I'm, I'm most proud of that I was able to take a look at myself and see who Cynthia really is. Oh. I've been here nine months as well. And I learned some things like attention and, and, and responsibilities. You guys taught me about making goals. You taught me how to dress, you know, to look nice and to be a positive person. And this is what I learned. Even though I'm not, I was here for a purpose. And I, I, I don't even know. I just can't put it in words right now. I learned so much here and I'm still learning and I'm still That's open. That's wonderful. Yes, That's wonderful. As, as part of our programming, you ladies have had the opportunity to be the greeters, the peer mentors for the other women that come into the house. What's the one thing that you want to tell the current residents that, you know, like what's the secret sauce to how you're feeling so good about yourselves? Patrice? I would say, well, in my household, I tell the girls all the time, if you work the program, the program will work for you. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. And Cynthia, what would you say? Same thing. I try to be a mentor, but, you know, a positive so I can help some people like clothes. But I would say to the girls, please be focused. Please have a made up mind. Please focus on the good things in life. Don't look back so much. Just focus on being the mm. best you can be. But you, it takes it takes attendance. It takes respect, and it takes some and it takes a positive attitude at the Lord's place to help you. And to keep forward, don't be negative. I know I would tell them, don't be negative, be positive. Mm -hmm. Even if it's wrong, be positive about it, be open about it. And, and don't come here and let what's here in Lord's place go uh, slip away from you because this is the best program that I've ever been in. And I'm Thank serious. So I want all the ladies to realize that it's, life is short out there. Make up your mind, because it's help. It, it'll work if you work it, just like the key thing. You got to have a made up mind and be positive. Please try to be positive. This is what I'm trying to really get to. Don't be negative to people that you don't even know what's on their mind, you know. So, exactly. That's my so, so ladies, as you know, we are taping this right now um, to share with some audience from our sleep out, which is our huge signature fundraising event. And it really is about raising awareness um, about the plight of homelessness in Palm Beach County. So if you were to send a message, if you would share a message to the audience about um, what you would want them to know about women who are experiencing struggles and homelessness and addiction and struggles, but what message would you want them to hear from you? Patrice, what would you want to tell the community about what they need to know about women and the services that, that you need as you are trying to rebuild your life? I've noticed that like, we're not in it alone. Like I came here and I seen several women that were in the same situation to me as me. And I literally, it humbled me for who I am. And it created a new me. I became that flower Miss Val always talks about. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And, and you get to be watered every day and you just keep blooming, yeah, right? I learn every single day. I'm learning about different personalities, different situations, and I'm learning how to accept the things that I cannot change and change the things that I can. And what do you think the community thinks about women experiencing homelessness? You think there's a myth there when they when they think about women that are experiencing homelessness? 
I don't know exactly, like I've had family members talk down about me and tell me that I wasn't worth anything, but I had to explain to them, like you would never know unless you walk into my shoes. Amen. Amen. And we're closer to homelessness than we think sometimes. And we don't give credit to that. Exactly right. Exactly right. Miss Cynthia, what about you? What message would you want to send to the community about the work of the Lord's place and your experience um, struggling with homelessness and finding a place to live? What would you want the community to know? I would, I would say it's, it's, it's no picnic when you're homeless, when you're living on the streets, when you can't eat when you want to, you can't sleep the way you want to, you can't do your personal stuff the way you want to. And I mean, it's really hard out there on the street. When you're at Dixon, when your drug addiction takes over, but nothing else matters. Right. When that first, when you get to that point where the addiction takes over, I don't want nothing to have control over me like that no more. I do not want to be. And all I can say is to the ladies is pray and be the best you can be, but if you need help, you have to reach out for it because I needed it and I was out there for months. And I really didn't want to. I shut down, but that's not the right thing to do. You got to, you got to open up. You got to reach out for help. If it crosses your mind and just go through, that's a sign that you want help. And please understand, being homeless and on drugs, that's not the way to live. That's not the way God wants us. He wants us to bloom like I have. I have blossoms. I have, oh, I'm shining. I'm glowing. <laughs> you know, I have, oh, man, I just can't say it so much. It's going to take y'all a novel. I'm going to write y'all a novel. Because so many <laughs> things have happened to me here. Yeah. Between the good and the bad, it's no yeah. picnic. But please understand, being homeless ladies and being on drugs, that's not the way you want to live. I am an expert. I, <laughs> I wouldn't say expert in that sense, but I'm a witness yeah. that God is good. But All the time. Yeah. You got to want it. You don't want to live out there. Women, women can't do what men do and live on the streets. It's not the same thing. It makes a woman, but when you're thinking about these things, that's a start. Even if you don't reach out, just keep praying and ask God to show you a better way. Yeah. Okay. You know, I think there's always been this misconception of um, that people that are homeless choose that life. And I think, Miss Cynthia, you just described, and so did you, Patrice, that that is not the life that they do. So, you agree with me, right? I mean, people go, well, they, they want to be out there. That's the mm -hmm. life they want to live. And we know that's not true, correct? Patrice, no do you wants, agree? No one wants to live that way. Yeah. No one. It is not a choice. Sometimes we're forced to be out here. That's so interesting. I had never heard someone say forced, but I think there, we tend to think that there are choices. And, and oftentimes, as we all know, Val and I've talked about this for a long time, many of our women don't have the same choices that Val and I would have had. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, the sensitivity of being able to, as a community, reach out to women on the streets and women that are experiencing homelessness is so important because that makes us a stronger community when we can take care of, of women like yourself and provide services and believe that you guys are worth more than what the streets can offer. And you already described that to us. Ms. Cynthia, do you agree with that? Yes, 100%. Yeah. Nobody Good. wants to be homeless. I mean, I don't care how, what, how you feel and what, and I see people that I used to know for years and they still out there. Right. I'm talking older people and most of the people that I met even when I go back to Tallahassee, I see my classmates, they still out there, but it's not too late because you're still here. You still mm -hmm. have a chance. When you wake up the next morning, God wakes you up, you have a chance to make yeah. a better way for yourself. Exactly. And you, you brought up a good, 
you brought up a good point, Miss Cynthia, that Val and I, Val and I are dealing with, and for the audience to know this also, and to our listeners, that one of the fastest growing populations right now, right, Miss Val, yes. would be fifty-five and older. Mm -hmm. Fifty-five and older. Yep, and we are really dealing with how we're going to continue to serve that population because we know, Miss Cynthia, that there's so many more that want to come in, and and so we are challenged as an organization to be responsive to the needs of the older generation, and and we're working diligently on that. Um, that's for sure. Yeah. So, and I think there's there's um, a misconception that there aren't that many homeless women out in our community. Right. As you heard from Cynthia and Patrice. They couch surf for a bit. Many of the women come from residing in their cars, in the shelter, you know, at a mall so that they're not in, at risk of being hurt or harmed while they're out in the community. So the women that we're serving oftentimes are not the ones that are seen or, or, or right. imagined to be out there. And they right. are. They are. They just have to be a little bit more diligent in hiding that homelessness for their safety and well-being. Right. And Patrice, you said that you went from couch to couch, right? For a long time. For a long time. Yeah. And how, and, and is that, is that going from friends to friends or were family members or just friends, family, whoever would let me stay the night that night. Yeah. Yeah. Were there nights you actually had to sleep out on the, out on the streets though, or were you fortunate enough to mostly just sleep couch to couch? No, you slept no, there on the was streets. Nights I had to sleep outside. Yeah. Yeah, well, we continue to work towards finding solutions and breaking that cycle of homelessness. And that's what we do here at the Lord's Place. Any last words you would like to share with our audience? I'll start with Miss Cynthia. If you want to just say some farewell words to the listeners tonight on, on your experience and what you want them to remember. Uh, I just want to say thank you. So very much, Miss Val Stanley, and to you, I am so relieved. I'm so happy. Even though I still got a long way to go, I just want to say this place has made me a better person. This place has gave me hope when I didn't have it. This place has gave me strength. And this place has gave me joy and love. The, the, the staff members and Ms. Bell, I mean, it's just so much love. And don't give up, please. If you out there, find help. I do it sometimes. I have, I just have a heart that just, just, just very humble to you guys. Because if it wasn't for y'all, I don't know where I would be right now. I just want to say thank you so very much. You're so very welcome. And Miss Patrice, what would you like just last, last farewell words for you today? I just want to let you guys know that I am truly grateful for all the services that you have given unto me. And I want to tell any homeless woman out there, just keep your head up. There's mm. hope. I love it. I love it. Miss Val? Last words um, from you, my friend. That there is hope, but that we still need the help of the community to help the entire Lord's Place community, to help women such as this out there that are still out there, unfortunately. Um, but there is hope with the Lord's Place and with these ladies now going out into the community with their heads, as you said, held up high, Patrice, and being able to help others as they help themselves. Absolutely. And as the CEO of the Lord's Place, I just want to thank you all for being with us tonight. It has been remarkable, and I'm always inspired when I hear stories from Miss Cynthia and Miss Patrice of, of your journey and your resilience, and most of all, how you continue to find gratitude in your heart. So thank you for letting us be part of your journey, and we're honored and privileged to do that. And on behalf of everyone here at the Lord's Place, we thank you for your support and your dedication to working side by side with us as we continue to serve the women of our community. So God bless you and may you continue to find your own purpose as we continue to help our women find their purpose in life. Good night.